This video is sponsored by videoblogs.com. Videoblogs has one of the fastest growing largest stock video libraries with over 3 million videos, After Effects templates and motion backgrounds. This includes the only contributor marketplace that gives 100%, that's right, 100% of the commission back to the artist. And all these clips come with a royalty free agreement so you can't get hit with any copyright claims. They are giving away 7 days of video blogs so you can try it out and get access to this massive video library and royalty free license for free. Make sure to check out videoblogs.com slash youtube or click the link in the description box below to start downloading and get 7 days of video blogs absolutely free. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Nikhil from dopemotions.com and welcome to this brand new After Effects tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to create a really cool looking slideshow animation in After Effects which is very much trending these days. Mostly it's known as the Rhythmic Storm kind of a slideshow animation. I don't really know what it's called but something like a Rhythmic Storm animation and something like that but it looks definitely really really cool. So let's get straight into the video and get started. Alright, so here we are in After Effects. So let's start by creating a new composition and let's rename this to main. Oh, I'm gonna keep it capital 1920 into 1080. Let's make this 30 FPS or 60 FPS. Let's go with 60 FPS. 10 seconds should be good and hit OK. So here we have our composition ready. Let's create one more composition which is gonna be our media placeholder. So let's rename this to media placeholder where we can drag any image or footage whenever that we want. And let's create one more for our title. So let's rename this to text and hit OK. And into the media placeholder, I'm going to drag in my footage. You can of course use any footage that you want. I got this footage from video blogs. They have some really cool looking footages up to 4K resolution. So that is a really good thing. So let's go back into our main composition. And the first thing that I'm going to do is drag in the media placeholder composition into the media comp just like that and then I'm going to select the rectangle tool and set the stroke to none and for the fill I'm going to go with a white color maybe for now and randomly I'm going to create some squares just like that you know something like this pretty randomly cause we will be using them as displacement map. So pretty quickly I'm going to create a few squares. Now just to keep in mind that the more squares you create the more complex your look is going to get. So yeah it depends on how complex you want to create the animation. So let's say this much looks fine to me. Then I'm going to select the layer and hit U two times. So it's going to reveal all the properties and what I'm going to do is just randomly give some black to white shades just like that to the squares just something like that pretty randomly doesn't really matter we something like a darker black so it may take a bit time it's kind of a tedious to do depends on how many squares you have something like that now I don't really like to fast forward the clip but I think in this case you guys get the idea so I'm just gonna fast forward this So there we go, there we have some bunch of squares. And then what I can do is just close this off first of all and let's rename this. So maybe let's call this squares. All right. And maybe I'll just pre-compose this. So hit control shift C to pre-compose it and let's call this squares. Let's leave it at squares. Hit okay. And on the media placeholder, I'm gonna add the displacement map effect. And in the displacement map, I'm going to select the squares composition. We can hide this comp. And now if I move this, you can see we get this really cool effect, you know, horizontally and vertically as well. So it's a pretty cool effect to play around with. So what I'm going to do is let's close it and make some room right over here. Hit F4 so we can see just the properties that we want. So let's say I'm going to go to maybe around, let's go to one second. All right and create a keyframe on the position 
hit P to bring down the position create a keyframe go back in time and let's bring this just like that by holding shift and then right over here let's say at 45 frames I'm gonna create a keyframe on the maximum horizontal displacement all right and then go forward in time let's say right over here I'm gonna set this really high hit U and I'll just bring this keyframe right over here and this keyframe right over there so now we have something like this you can see looks pretty cool so let's select all the keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease it go to graph editor and let's just bring this handle just like that and for this one I'm just gonna bring it just like so so now we should have something like this this looks really cool yep looking pretty good then what we can do is duplicate this by hitting control D on the keyboard okay and let's hit U so we can see just the keyframes and I'm gonna delete the position keyframes and also I'm gonna get rid of the maximum horizontal displacement keyframe let's set this to zero also I'm gonna add a fast blur to this really something like that repeat H pixels so we have something like this as you can see all right so I'm gonna set this to one second and create a keyframe on the position of this one so hit P create a position go back in time and I'm gonna move it to the left just like that select this F9 graph editor and the same thing just like we did before so now we have something like this just just the difference is I'm gonna give it a little bit of displacement as well something like so get rid of edge or maybe I'll just bring this down just a little bit just like so you can see looks pretty cool maybe I'll just bring this really subtle just like so also I'm gonna add a curves adjustment to it just to make it a bit darker something like so. so now we have something like this which looks pretty cool also I'm gonna animate actually the maximum position for this one as well so let's go to one second and set this select right over here set this to zero create a keyframe go back in time and bring the displacement up just like so something like this also I'm gonna move this keyframe a bit closer not the position one the maximum horizontal displacement one so now we have something like this pretty cool then what we can do is create a new adjustment layer and let's rename this to OP or oh, not OP for optical layers actually OC for optics compensation let's add the effect and then we can reverse the lens distortion and create a really simple looking parallax kind of a parallax is not actually a parallax it's an optical distortion effect but it gives kind of a feel of a parallax so I'm gonna set this to somewhere around there okay create a keyframe go to around five seconds and bring this up just like so. so now we have a little bit of optic compensation going on in the background as you can see it looks pretty cool also I'm gonna add some scaling animation to this as well so let's create a new null object and let's rename this to let's re rename this to zoom and then I want to parent everything to the null object Let's go where is the parent pan this to null object and then we can do a little bit of zoom animation so hit s to bring down the scale properties create a keyframe go to five seconds and maybe I'll set this to 1 1 10 that should be enough so now we have something like this pretty cool maybe I think I'm not going to use the fast blur I think it looks better without the fast blur I think yep so I'm just gonna get rid of this one there we go let's create a new adjustment layer and 
bring this on the top and for this one I'm gonna rename this to G for glow and let's add some glow to this now we need to be very careful with the glow cause it can you know mess up with your footages so it depends on your footage how much glow that you want to use I'm gonna keep it really minimal just a touch so you can see before and after looks pretty good also create a new adjustment layer for vignette so I'm gonna rename this to V for vignette and let's add a curves adjustment to this bring this down select the ellipse tool and just double click on it invert the mask and feather this up to around maybe really high something like that and bring this a bit closer just like so so you can see the difference looking pretty nice you can control the vignette amount by adjusting the curves just like so there we go looking pretty good now what I'm going to do is to add a bit more detail to this what we can do is first of all I'm going to just hide the null object alright so let's create a new solid and rename this to F for fractal noise and that's right we're going to be adding the fractal noise effect which is a really cool one and let's set this to blocks bring down the complexity to 1 maybe and bring up the brightness all the way up just like so and the contrast play around with the contrast and the brightness actually also I'm gonna bring up the scale just like so okay looking pretty good and let's set the blending mode to silver sell out alpha no I'm taking sell out luma yep that's what I'm going for and just bring down the opacity a bit just like so. So now we have something like this. Now it depends totally on you guys if you want to use it. If you don't want to use it, it's still fine. You know, you can just adjust the brightness and the contrast as well, depending how many squares you want. Just to add a bit more of detail, you can actually put the opacity all the way up and you can play around with the contrast, I guess. So, you know, no, I don't, I don't think that's going to work. So I'm going to set the opacity to 10 maybe really minimal you can see just to add a bit a bit more level of detail to this and also I'm gonna animate the evolution you know so let's hold alt and click on the stopwatch and let's type in an expression called times time into 100 so it's gonna keep on evaluate evolu evolution <laughs> the evolution is keep on you know animating pretty cool let's set this a bit more high to Let's go with maybe 180s or something like that. Yep, this is actually looking pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and add some text to the slideshow. And it's the same way, the same exact way how we did with the media placeholder. So let's drag in our text composition into the media placeholder. Let's go and let's type in something. You can type in anything that you want. You can also use a logo if you want. I'm just going to type in the slideshow. and just align this to the center so there we go maybe I'll just bring this make it a little bit smaller somewhere around there okay looking pretty good now what I'm gonna do is let's say I'll go to two seconds and create a keyframe on the position of the text so hit P to bring down the position Create a keyframe, go back in time to somewhere around one second and just bring this right over here. So now we have something like this. Let's select the keyframes, hit F9, go to graph editor and I'm just going to drag this handle. So we have something like that. You can see it snaps in into place. I think it's a bit too slow. So I'll just bring this a bit closer. something like that pretty cool and right over here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the displacement map again so let's select the squares composition oh actually we don't need to even select it I'm gonna select the text and add the displacement map to this 
and let's set this to squares now you can you can see it, it get displaced with the squares just like so so let's set it somewhere around there really crazy you can see create a keyframe go ahead in time a bit and let's set this to zero oh that is not looking good let's hit u so we can see just the keyframe go right over here and let's bring this in the minus i guess that would look better so select the keyframes hit f9 go to graph editor and let's drag this handle just like so and for the keyframe i'm just gonna bring it right over here you can see looking pretty cool So let's preview this and I think this came out really nice and it is really simple and easy to create and you can create your own bunch of slideshows by creating more and more different variation you can use circles or you know rectangles rectangles so that's what we are using but you know circles or polygons and stuff like that and create some really cool looking slideshow animations so that's all for today and I hope this was helpful to you guys Oh, before we go, one more thing that you can add is a new adjustment layer and add a sharpen to this and a little bit of sharpening just to make it a bit more nice. Yep, this is looking much better. So that's a really quick adjustment that you can do. Thank you so much. So that is a wrap for today. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. And if it was, make sure to subscribe, comment and like. And I will see you guys in my next video. Till then, take care. Thank you so much for watching guys. And don't forget to stay raw, stay creative.